Live on tape from Brunswick Zone Roswell in Roswell, Georgia, it's Prodigy Bowlers Tour, a series of unofficial, informal, and impromptu after-league challenge matches conducted by some of the most active and engaged youth bowlers in our program, all in an effort to simulate the pressure of big-time tournament competition in an open-play environment. The mission of Prodigy Bowlers Tour is to celebrate junior bowling while we elevate junior bowlers. Today, the regulars from Roswell are joined by a collection of some of the very best youth bowlers from around the state of Georgia who have come to Brunswick Zone Roswell to join us for today's very special episode. And to showcase the all-star talent that we have assembled here today, we've selected a format that's never been used before on Prodigy. It's a team format that I dreamed up a couple of seasons ago for a home-and-home -home series of challenge matches we staged against a neighboring bowling center pitting the elite bowlers from our youth program against theirs. And it marks the first time ever on Prodigy that we've staged a team event. Here's how the format works. We have two teams of six bowlers each. You'll meet them in a moment. Only five on each team will bowl each game, so one will be selected by each of the team captains to sit out each game, leaving five bowlers to compete in each game. A prescribed number of points are awarded each game, with the team with the most points at the end of the third game the winner. Here's how the points are awarded. Game one, it's five on five. Five bowlers from both teams will bowl one full game each, the team with the highest total pinfall at the end of the game will be awarded three points. Game two, it's a five-man Baker game. For those who don't know how the Baker format works, each of the five players on the team will bowl two frames. Bowler number one bowls in frames one and six, bowler two bowls in frames two and seven, bowler three in frames three and eight, bowler four in frames four and nine, and bowler five will bowl frames five and 10. The team that bowls the highest game will be awarded three points. Three points for game one, three points for game two, so a team could conceivably be up or down by a score of six to nothing after the first two games. But they can make it up in the decisive third game. In game three, it's five on five once again, but this time each individual player is bowling for a match point. Bowler number one on team A will bowl against bowler number one on team B. Bowler number two versus bowler number two. Bowler three against bowler three, four against four, and bowler five against bowler five. Each individual match is worth one point for a total of five individual match points. Plus, the team with the highest total pinfall in game three will receive three more points. So in all, there are eight points in play in game three five individual match points, and three for total pins for a total of eight points in play that third game. So even if you're down six to nothing after the first two games, you can come back and sweep all five matches in the third game and win the day, eight to six. Or if you enter game three trailing six to nothing, if you can win four matches and total pins, that would give you seven points, while the team that was up six to nothing at the beginning of game three would get one point leaving the teams tied at seven points apiece, forcing a sudden death roll-off to decide the team winner. So that's how the format works. We selected two players as captains and let them bowl for the right to the first draft pick. From there, the captains simply took turns drafting their teams from the available players. So now, let's meet the two teams who are contesting this team challenge. Bowling in the leadoff position in the first game for Team Tyrell is Bryant. This young lefty has been on Prodigy before when he took Charlie to the brink, only to let him off the hook in the final frames. Bryant recently finished third in the U-12 boys division at the Georgia Youth Bowlers Tour season-ending Tournament of Champions. In the second position is Joshua. Josh is visiting today from Fort Benning, where his mom and dad run the junior program at the bowling center that's on the military base there. Josh recently finished fifth in the U15 boys division at the GYBT Tournament of Champions, seen on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. Bowling third for Team Tyrell is Brandon, or Little B as we call him. Brandon just completed his second full season of league bowling, 
And on this day, not only is his dad in the gallery, but so are some of his relatives from out of town, including his grandfather, who introduced Little B to the sport of bowling just a few years ago. Bowling fourth was the captain's first draft choice, Charlie. Charlie is well known to viewers of Prodigy Bowlers Tour. He won the inaugural coveted trophy pin, commemorating his claim to bragging rights in perpetuity for the 2016-17 bowling season. He won the U15 boys division at Pepsi this year and finished fourth at the recent GYBT TOC. And bowling anchor for Team Tyrell is team captain Tyrell, who's making his first appearance on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. He finished second a couple of weeks ago at Georgia YBT's Tournament of Champions. And in the process, he bowled just the second 300 game in GYBT history during qualifying. This two-hander has a devastating strike ball and is one of the top two or three youth bowlers in the state of Georgia. Sitting out for Team Tyrell in Game 1 is Karina. Fans of Prodigy have grown familiar with Karina. Her best showing on Prodigy was a runner-up finish in our Sudden Elimination Challenge back in February. Now we turn to Team Panda. Bowling leadoff for Team Panda in the first game is Christian. Fans of Prodigy know Christian quite well, a three-time winner on Prodigy. Curly is looking for a big day today to validate all the work he's been putting in on his game in recent weeks. Bowling second for Team Panda in Game 1 is Riley. Riley won the U-12 girls division at the recent GYBT Tournament of Champions and obviously is one of the top young female bowlers in Georgia. She's here with her brother, who is bowling in the next slot. That's Dawson. This smooth-stroking left-hander, Dawson, recently captured third place at the GYBT TOC in the U-15 boys division, which we covered here on Prodigy Bowlers Tour back on June 4th. Dawson and his sister enjoy the advantage of having a silver-certified coach right at home in their father, Wes. Bowling fourth for Team Panda in Game 1 is Dakota. Dakota is a huge fan of Prodigy Bowlers Tour and contacted me last week to see if he'd be welcome to come participate in our summer spare clinic held just prior to the Prodigy taping. Bowling out of AMF Woodstock, Dakota hasn't yet been participating in the local tournament scene, but as I think you'll agree when you see him bowl, he should be. And bowling anchor for Team Panda is Josh, who goes by the nickname Panda. That's where the team name comes from. Josh is actually now bowling adult leagues, so strictly speaking, he's no longer a junior bowler. However, he's 19 years old, which makes him a U-20. And here on Prodigy Bowlers Tour, where our competition is unofficial, informal, and impromptu, we're happy to welcome him to our family. Prior to moving out of the junior bowling program, Josh was considered the number one junior bowler in the state of Georgia, winning numerous Pepsi and GYBT tournaments during his years in youth bowling. And finally, sitting out the first game for Team Panda is the youngest player in our field today, Juwan. Another lefty, Juwan recently finished second in the Roswell Junior Varsity Tournament of Champions. This fall, he ages into the Varsity League, where we expect him to start making big strides forward. And that's our field today on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. We join the first game in progress as the bowlers are about to begin their sixth frame. This field today comprised of seven visitors and five Roswell regulars, so we actually have more visitors today than we have regulars. A little unusual, although some of these visitors have been on Prodigy in the past. You may recognize Bryant, who's up on the right lane. And he rips the rack for his opening shot. Up on the left now. Christian leading off for Team Panda. And Christian with his third strike in a row to keep it going. That's four strikes in six frames. Here's Joshua on the right. Crossing over leaves the 2-7 split. Joshua and his dad came up from Fort Benning, Georgia in South Georgia. I guess it's about a two-hour drive. 
to come up here. Now Riley on the left. A little lower ball speed than some of the other players we'll see today. That ball didn't quite have the drive. The old saying applies, no drive, no five. Here's Josh for the split. And converts it perfectly. Now Riley with a pretty routine spare here, right in the middle of the lane. She has no problem with the five pin. And now we'll get a look at her brother, Dawson, who you may recall appeared on our show a couple of weeks ago when we covered the Georgia Youth Bowlers Tour Tournament of Champions at Brunswick Zone Lilburn. Dawson finished third in the tournament, the U15 boys division, smooth left-hander. Oh, he sends that one a little wide, but he gets the break and rolls the three pin. Here's Brandon on the right. Coming in just a little bit light, doesn't quite have the stuff to force out the seven pin. And now we get our first look at Dakota, who's making his first appearance on Prodigy. Bowls at a neighboring bowling center about 15 miles down the road. Working on a strike. Crosses over, leaves the nine. Now Brandon going cross lane at the seven pin, using his plastic ball. Oh, and that one slides by. Probably could have oriented his body a little bit more to the left so that he'd be facing the spare. In any case, here's Dakota going for his spare, the nine pin. And gets it. And now Charlie. Charlie rips the rack and opens with a six bagger in this game. And now here is Panda or Josh R. On the left. Big cranker trips the four. And now he has a double trying to keep pace with Tyrell, who we see on the right. Tyrell hasn't missed yet. Strong two-hander. And he comes in light and mixes them up. Hit them thin and watch them spin. So we've got a couple of players now opening with six in a row. Here's Bryant on the left, going for a double. And leaves the seven. Ball doesn't quite finish strong enough to slap out the corner pin. And now Christian, who is working on a turkey, up on the right. Oh, and he pulled that one badly, and it goes right through the nose, and he's got the big four. Bryant covers his seven pin. Now, in this first game, the team that scores the highest total pinfall wins three points in this team competition. Christian takes the count and takes his medicine. Joshua on the left. Slaps out the seven pin, just like Bryant was wishing he had a moment ago. And now we see the kids all come to the ball return to remove their extra equipment. Seems like everybody's got about five balls up there. Here's Riley again. Oh, look at that one. 
crosses over and gets the nine. Now watch this one. Just tilts it out at the very end. And now Brandon. Oh, that was a strong ball. He rips the five over to the seven. But it goes in front, and that's what we call the swish and seven. Here's Dawson. And that is just the way you draw it up. And Dawson gets a turkey. And now Brandon, after having run by the seven pin on the right lane in his previous frame, see if he makes a slight adjustment this time to cover that corner pin. I didn't really see him missing two of those in a row. Now Dakota up on the right lane. Got a spare up. And that one hits high flush, and that's 10 back. And now Charlie, working on six in a row. Oh, are you kidding? What a way to see a string stop. Watch this one. You can't throw it any better than this, but he will take the five straight back off the eight. And so much for any hopes for a 300 game. Here is Panda on the right. And that ball just hits a little flat, leaves a weak 10. Charlie for the eight. And that is a spare. So Josh R goes to the other ball return over to the right. We're not using the pair on the right. And he grabs his urethane ball. And covers the 10. No problem. Now, Tyrell on the left, working on six in a row. And puts one right in the hole, and they disappear just like that. So back to the top of the order as we head into the eighth frame. And now Bryant up on the right. And he gets another ripper on the right lane. So he likes that lane. We don't really know what pattern we're bowling on today. We think it's the house shot, but the lane machine's broken. Christian, with a runaway train that time, leaves just the five. That could have been almost anything. But an easy spare. Now Joshua up on the right, working on a strike. Comes in light and shakes him out with a wall shot. Christian going for the five. Gives it plenty of room, but boy, that thing almost hooked by. So he's going to need to either straighten out his angles just a little bit or pick up the speed. Hold that line. Next to go on the left is Riley. Oh, and that one doesn't quite get back, and now she's faced with a difficult spare, the one 2 washout. Brandon up on the right. And he stuffs one. A little bit of pressure on Brandon today, having the whole family in from out of town. They're all rooting for him. And now Riley, try to get the ball over to the left of the one pin, knock it into the 10. Just like that. As we see Charlie on the right lane. 
Comes up light, leaves the 2-5. Let's take a look at that conversion by Riley just a moment ago. She actually goes to the wall with the head pin, and then it gets the 10. That works, too. And now Dawson up on the left. Ooh, ringing seven. Can't throw it much better than that. That stops his streak of strikes at three. Charlie up the left side at the 2-5 and chops it. Well, all the times I've talked to him about changing his angle, shooting at that 2-4-5, 2-5 combo, and he goes up the left side just like I had suggested, and wouldn't you know it, he chops it. Dawson with a little straighter shot at the corner pin and covers it easily. All right. Tyrell with the front seven up in the eighth. Oh, he looks away. He hates it. Oh, through the nose. And it strikes anyway. How did that happen? Well, let's look at it again and see what happened. This one's going right through the nose. And that six pin hesitated, but it went. Well, just about every 300 requires a little bit of luck somewhere along the way. Here's Dakota. High flush and a double for Dakota, cutting the lead of Team Tyrell to 58. Still a pretty big lead with just a couple of frames left. Christian changed balls, went with his pearl, and that one doesn't quite finish, and he leaves a week 10. Here is Josh R. Light, and the head pin flies up and around the four and the seven. Doesn't give him any help off the wall, like you might expect. And once again, some of the kids going to grab some bowling equipment off the rack. Here's Josh for the spare. Hooks at the 4-7 and covers it. And now Christian going cross lane with his plastic ball at the 10. And converts it. The drill earlier in the day was sevens and tens in our spare clinic. These kids shouldn't be missing any of those today. Oh, man. Bryant just threw it about as good as you can, but it just finished fractionally high, and the ball just chopped the five right off of the eight. And now up on the right lane, Here's Riley in the ninth. And there is one right in the pocket. Can't throw it any better than that. Spare for Bryant. The lead for Team Tyrell is 61. Team Panda needs to finish strong if they want to cut into that lead and try to overtake them for the first three points that'll be awarded in this match today. Dawson just a little wide with that one. It doesn't quite get back, but he almost got the shaker. But the seven stayed up. Here's Joshua working on a double. And that's how you slap out the seven, just like that. And now let's watch Dawson as he will come more up the back of the ball and just throw it a little straighter at the corner pin. He doesn't turn it like he does on a strike ball. And that is textbook right there. Here's Brandon in the ninth. Strike working. Oh, 
Oh, and that was just stuff. That looked like it was going a little high, but he just creamed him. So now Charlie, after starting with six in a row, a spare in the seventh. Well, it's going to be Dakota, I guess, that's next. Dakota's got a double working. And he's up in the ninth. First time we've seen Dakota. Pretty good little game. I like his game. Comes up just a little high, almost trips the four into the nine. But a simple spare. And now Charlie. Right back on track after that open frame in the eighth. As Dakota wipes down his bowling ball. Moves a few boards to the left. Just throw a normal strike ball from just slightly to the left of where you stand for a strike. And no problem. Here's Tyrell. And another good one. Gets that 10 to fall inward when it 10 falls in like that. You know you've got the right angle. Here's Josh R in the ninth. Oh, look at that trip for man. That was really high. He almost had the 410. Watch this. It just tickles the four just enough to take it out. And now Christian in the 10th. A little wide. Oh, man. What a way to get four. He has left the three, four, six, seven, nine, ten. Bryant slaps out the seven just the way you draw it up. And now, Christian, this is uh, very difficult. Got to get the ball over to the right of the three. Try to carry out the back pin and get the three over into the four and seven. And that's no good right there. He chops the three nine and just gets six out. A four two finish in the tenth. Not what he was hoping for. And Bryant goes a little wide with that one, and it comes back strong. And he leaves the 2-4-8. As now Riley up in the 10th, working on a strike. Crosses over, leaves the 3-6. Team Tyrell just giving it to Team Panda. 113 pin margin right now. That'll shrink a little bit, but just a fill ball. Here's Riley for the spare. Goes with her plastic ball, which makes sense since she doesn't generate a lot of speed. A plastic ball is not going to hook much. So a spare in the 10th. As now Joshua from Team Tyrell is up in the 10th. He's got three strikes up. You hear that ball thumpity thumpity thumping down the lane. He does not have a thumb hole. That's rolling over the finger hole. Very high track. Riley, her fill ball. And that's the way you finish the game right there. 10 back and a 185 for Riley. And now Joshua in the 11th. And he trips the six to get another one. That's gonna put him in the 220s with good count. Here's Dawson in the 10th. Oh my goodness gracious, he threw that well. 
just not getting the luck. He came in a little high, but that could have struck. Josh was fill ball. 223 with all 10. And he rips the five over into the 10, and that's what he has, a 223. Good game as Team Tyrell's lead grows to 133. A spare for Dawson in the 10th. That 133 margin means nothing other than the fact that they're going to win the game. It doesn't carry over. The total pins only counts for this game. And if they win, they get three points, and they're certainly going to win. Little B gets a strike in the tenth, and that's three in a row. And now Dawson on his fill ball. A strike for 193. This one comes up high, and he leaves a few, so that's a 190 for Dawson. Still. An acceptable game. I know he was looking for more, but 190 is nothing to sneeze at. Brandon, another one right in the pocket. And that's four in a row. And now Dakota up in the 10th, working on a spare. Crosses over, nearly trips out the six and the ten. The ten fell forward, but nine and a wiggle is all she wrote. And another one stuffed by Brandon, and that's a 236. And that's a nine strike game for Brandon. Nine strikes and two opens. That's how you shoot in the 230s. For the six pin, Dakota. Oh, and that one slides off into Never Never Land, and it's an open, but a 206 for Dakota. As Charlie comes up just fractionally high and leaves the four. Josh R. Panda in the tenth with a strike up. Man, he throws a lot of ball. And a spare for Charlie in the tenth. So he's going to be in the 230s without really breaking a sweat. Josh R. can finish in the 240s if he strikes here. But he doesn't get the messenger, and he's going to be in the 230s. And a balk from Charlie. I'm not sure what happened there. It's just a fill ball, so it's fairly inconsequential, especially considering that his team leads by 100 and 59 pins, but looks like he's changing balls. He wants to use this opportunity to get a read on what this ball will do. And he'll have to play a different line with it if he intends to use it next game. As Josh R. covers the 10 and finishes with a 235, but now all eyes are on Tyrell. Stepping up in the 10th frame, working on the front nine. This is the first time we've been in this situation on Prodigy. Can he finish it off? Oh, oh no! Not a five. Oh, you heard him. Out of all things, not a five pin as some extra bowling equipment from the rack goes flying off onto the floor. 
Let's take another look at that shot by Tyrell. You can see what happens. The five got paralyzed. He had plenty of drive to knock it out, but something hit it just as the ball hit it. But a conversion. So he's in the 270s. Wow. That could have been a strike. I would guess that might be the first five pin Tyrell has left in maybe six months. Well, and that was off in the weeds. He finishes with 275. Not bad, young man. Three points to Team Tyrell. Game two is Baker, and we'll be back with that after this. Now, bring the spirit of Prodigy Bowlers Tour to your bowling center with Prodigy Bowlers Tour t-shirts and sportswear, including collared shirts with the Prodigy logo printed on the back to show that you support junior bowling. Check out the entire assortment of Prodigy t-shirts in the Brownswick store. Visit ProdigyBowlersTour.com to see the selection. See the Ash Gray Celebrating Junior Bowling Elevating Junior Bowlers t-shirt. Or the Who Will Win the Coveted Trophy Pin t-shirt. Or maybe you'd want the one that says, I've come to get my bowl on, right on the front of the shirt. Or simply, Bowl Me. There's a t-shirt that says, Bowling. You probably don't get it because it's mainly for smart people. And if you're a proud parent with a junior bowler, we've got a t-shirt just for you. And how about this t-shirt? You're bowling an eighth grader. Prepare to meet defeat. Available in grades one through nine, most in both adult and kid sizes. And finally, the shirt that reads, bowl better, have more fun, take lessons. Then maybe you can keep up with me. The Brownswick store is powered by the people at Cafe Press. And all of these shirts are available right now. Just go to ProdigyBowlersTour.com and click on the link to be taken right to the store. PayPal and credit cards accepted. That's ProdigyBowlersTour.com. Get your bowl on and bring the spirit of Prodigy Bowlers Tour to your house. Order now. Go to ProdigyBowlersTour.com. That's ProdigyBowlersTour.com. All right, game one is in the books, and just a remarkable scoring display as Team Tyrell averaged a sensational 229.8 per player that first game, with Tyrell getting the front nine on his way to a 275. Team Panda didn't bowl badly. They all peppered the pocket most of the game, but just couldn't keep up with the torrid pace set by Team Tyrell. By winning total pins in game one, Team Tyrell takes a 3-0 lead over Team Panda. So now we move to Game 2, which is our Baker match. Once again, this game is worth three points to the team that posts the higher one-game score. Now, the two players who sat out Game 1, Karina on Team Tyrell and Juwan on Team Panda, will be back in the lineup, as the rules state that all players must play and no player may sit out more than one game. So here we go with game two. And this should be interesting because we've got some players in this game who have bowled Baker before and some who have never seen Baker before. Like, for example, Jawan, who is bowling leadoff for Team Panda. He's up on the right. Oh, and that one just wanders a little high, and he's got the 4 6 10 to start. Now, you notice that we've got the kids' pictures above the frames that they'll bowl. Karina leading off for Team Tyrell. And that ball flattened out at the very end. You saw that it stopped climbing the last eight feet of the lane. She's got a split. Oh, and Jawan. Gets a field goal to start. So that's seven out, and Team Tyrell is off to an early lead, up 13. And 
and Karina has gone to get another ball, I think. So here is Riley bowling in the second for Team Panda. Ooh, comes up a little light. That ball flattened out as well, but she broke up the split, just the seven. And Karina's second shot hooks too much, and there is an open frame to start for Team Tyrell. So the lead is down to just two pins. As Riley goes for the seven. Oh, and that one just misses on the left, so another open frame. As Little B bowling in the second. Another one that seems to have stopped climbing in the last six or eight feet of the lane, just sort of flattened out at the end, and that's why he left a 10 pin. Here's Dawson in the third frame. He gets that one a little wide. He had no problem getting it to come back. It just didn't make it all the way. Three pin for Dawson. And now Brandon moves all the way to the left side of the approach, going cross lane with his plastic ball. Oh, and that one just gets away. And who's going to get a mark? I'll bet you Dawson gets one right here. That's my guess. He knew that one as soon as he let it go. He turned around. So there's a spare for Dawson as now Joshua up in the third frame for Team Tyrell on the left. And a powerful strike that. So now it's Dakota bowling in the four spot for Team Panda this game. And that one just gets a little wide and it hits the dry and comes charging back for a seven count, a three, six, 10, as Charlie now bowling in the fourth. And another one that wants to come back, but just kind of stops on its way back. And he leaves a week 10. So some of these more aggressive balls, they may need to move a little left or perhaps go with something that'll scoot down the lane a little bit more before they make the move. And there is an open frame by Dakota as he hooks it by the 3-6-10. So that's a, a disastrous frame. And Team Panda has three opens in four frames. You're not going to win many games that way. as Charlie converts the 10 for Team Tyrell. And now in the fifth frame, it's Josh R, or Panda. I like that little skip in his approach. And he slaps out the 10. That ball had no problem at all continuing to climb in the final feet of the lane. And now here's Tyrell on the left, fifth frame. And he gets that one out to the dry, and boy, it made a sharp left turn, but he had the speed on it to hold pocket, and that's a big strike. Now Jawan on the right lane. Comes up a little light. He made the adjustment after leaving that split in the first frame. But now he's got the three, five. Arena with a chance to put a strike right behind Tyrell's. That's the key to Baker. When your teammate can put a strike up, you want to put one right behind it. And she gets just enough back end on that one to carry the five. Jawan misses a little left with that one, and it doesn't quite make it back. And now... Another open frame for Team Panda as the lead for Team Tyrell grows to 40. The team that wins this game gets three points. Team Tyrell is already up three to nothing. 
And Brandon pulls that one, crosses over, leaves the three. Riley finds the pocket on the right lane and puts up another strike for her team. So she'll give her brother an opportunity to put a double up on the board for Team Panda right after Brandon shoots at the three pin. He covers it, no problem. All right, Dawson trying to cut the lead down to 29, if he can get a strike here. Well, that's how it's done right there. Let's take a look at his form. This kid's got all the tools. Good footwork in perfect position at the bottom of the swing. I have never seen Dawson out of balance. And that's just as good a strike as you'll ever see. Joshua. Oh, he gets that one up in the nose and trips out the 6 7 10. And now Team Panda with a double working. Dakota can cut the lead of Team Tyrell down to 19 with a strike. How about that one? I was afraid that ball hitting the floor off the ball return right as he was releasing it might distract him, but he must have ice in his veins or something. Or he's hard of hearing one or the other because it didn't seem to bother him at all. No flinch in that stroke. And now Charlie up in the ninth frame for Team Tyrell. Trying to put a strike behind another strike. And he does. So the lead back to 29. And now Josh R is just about got to go sheet here in the 10th. But that one hooks high and he's got the 310. Baby split. Not what he was looking for. And that'll do it for this game. Team Tyrell now with a strike in the 10th. That puts them at minimum at 187 if he throws the rest of them in the gutter. Josh R can only get to 166 for Team Panda, so it's going to be a 6 to nothing deficit for Team Panda going into the decisive third game. And if there's one thing about this format I've learned, although you can come back at the end, you really don't want to be down six to nothing. Wow. He just makes those pins look like they have no chance at all. Watch the power this kid generates. This is a half pocket. Most of us would leave a week 10 in this area of the pocket, but he gets so much entry angle, and that ball just has such continuation. Look at that. That's just shrapnel, those pins flying around back there. Strike for 217. That's a 216 and a six to nothing lead for Team Tyrell as we head into the third and decisive game. There's eight more points on the table. Let's see who gets them. It's a strike. Bowling's fun and AMF is the secret. AMF automatic pin spotters, a true quality AMF ball and sure-footed AMF bowling shoes add up to the perfect combination. And remember, superbly made AMF bags carry bowling ball and shoes the best. Get AMF balls, bags, and shoes from the man who knows your game, your bowling proprietor. So it appears that Team Tyrell is now on a roll, having swept the first two games of the Prodigy Team Showdown. That means Team Tyrell moves out ahead of Team Panda by a score of six to nothing. 
and it puts Team Panda's backs to the wall. As we enter the third and decisive game, Team Panda will need to win four of the five matches and take total pins just to force a roll-off. And if Team Tyrell can take two of the matches, they will claim the first ever Prodigy Team Showdown. Once again, the players who sat out game two are back in the lineup. So we'll see what these two team captains have up their sleeves. We are joining the third game in progress as the players are about to start the fourth frame. Now remember, it's bowler one against bowler one, two against two, three against three, each for a match point, plus three points for total pins. As Jawan sends it just a little too wide. And there is a moat ball to start our coverage of the third game. As you can see, Team Tyrell already off to a 56-pin lead. Team Panda needs to win most of these games. Karina lets that one drift high, and a seven count hands the lead in her match back to Juwan. If he can convert this spare. Crosses over, gets eight. So with that, the lead goes back to Karina. But she's got a tricky spare here herself. Sends it wide. Will it come back? Not quite. So that's nine out. And their match is even. Now Christian on the left lane. And that one just breaks a little too much, and he can't believe that thing didn't strike, but it didn't strike because it was a little too high. That ball chopped the five right off the nine. Bryant on the right lane. And a ring and seven for Bryant. As you see, he has started with three in a row, and now that nine count, he's got a 42-pin lead over Christian, who started with two opens. But he covers the nine. And now Bryant will go for that corner pin. And that one gets away from him. So an open in the fourth frame for Bryant and his lead shrinks to 30. Now they have moved Dakota in the order. He was going fourth in the previous games. He's bowling third here in the third game for Team Panda. And he crosses over and gets a Brooklyn strike. And that gives him a turkey. He started with an open, and then he has strung three in a row as his opponent, Joshua, up in the fourth. And he gets a strike to back up the one he already had. So Dakota owns a 13-pin lead in that match. And now up on the left is Dawson. He's chasing Tyrell. And that ball just hooks a little bit high. It's a solid six pin there. And once again, the kids are uh, looking at the ball return. It looks like there's a few too many balls. Most of these kids bring about six or more bowling balls the bowling center pretty much every time they bowl. Dawson going for the six pin. Makes it. And now Tyrell up on the right working on a spare. And just like Christian earlier his ball breaks sharply at the end and chops the five off the nine. Here's Josh R. That's how you get them all to go, right there. He's happy with that one. Three strikes in four frames. Tyrell for the spare. No problem with the nine. 
wouldn't expect these kids to have problems with single pin spares. Not as accomplished as they are. And now Charlie, who has opened with a turkey. And that's four in a row. And he extends his lead to 21. You see that three of the matches right now are in the Team Tyrell column. Team Panda needs to win four of these matches and total pins to force a roll off. Jawan. Little wide, 136. Juwan, the youngest player in the field today. Here's Karina on the left. Sends it wide and it doesn't quite carry out the four. Almost got a blower. Juwan covers the spare. Good shot. He gets a high five from his teammate Christian. And Karina covers the spare to keep her match with Juwan even. Now Christian, who's chasing Bryant, he's down by 30 right now. And gets a solid strike in the fifth frame. Goodness gracious. A pocket 7-10 for Bryant. He can't believe that happened. As Dakota up on the right lane in the fifth, working on three in a row, leading in his match by 13 over Joshua. And he's not giving Joshua any breathing room at all. And now Bryant will just go for one, hope for a miracle. No bounce out this time, so an open in the fifth, and now his big lead is down to 19 pins. Christian trying to close the gap in that one. Dawson fourth bowler for Team Panda. Tra trailing by 13 right now. Comes up a little light, leaves the three. And now Joshua on the left lane. Also comes up light, leaving a three. Both of our left-handers with virtually the same exact shot from two very different styles. Easy spare. And a conversion for Dawson. And now Joshua for his three pin. No problem. Our other Josh, Josh R. Panda, as he likes to be called. Crunch. He's got his game face on this game. He sees that Team Tyrell isn't quite so far ahead this time as they were in the first match. And none of these matches are what you would call out of hand at this point. Tyrell on the left. And that one hooks back sharply and he leaves a difficult three, six, nine spare. As Karina up in the sixth frame on the right. Crosses over and gets one.
And that's how you convert the 369, kids. All right. Charlie with a fast start this game. Working on the front four. Make that the front five. Can't throw it any better than that. And now Bryant leading Christian by 19 up in the sixth. Oh, and almost left a 6-8 split, broke it up, and now he's got an easy spare, just the eight. Jawan on the left. Oh, that was a pretty good ball right in the pocket, but he leaves a ringing seven. Again, this morning at our spare clinic, these kids were shooting sevens and tens all day, so I would expect he would probably know exactly what to do. It's a spare for Bryant. As Juwan goes and grabs his plastic ball, this is the ball he used to use on all his shots until about, I don't know, three or four months ago. Now he's learned how to use it on his left corner spares, and that's how you do it. Good shot, Juwan. And now Christian, with a strike working, he can cut Bryant's lead down to single digits if he can get a strike right here. Oh, and that was big. That put some pressure on Bryant. He has climbed back from 40 or more down, and now that match is within a mark. As Josh goes through the nose and now leaves the 247. And Dakota up on the left lane. Oh, look at this pin setter just swept Joshua's spare. Oh, no. Well, through the nose for Dakota and the 6710. Now, here's the deal I have just explained to Josh. Here's the rule. I make the rules. And in this situation, we've talked about this on Prodigy many times before, but this is open play. Our competition is unofficial, informal, and impromptu. And they're not going to reset spares for us in open play. So he's got a full rack to shoot. So he's got to make the full rack to get his spare. He has seven on the first ball. And he has a spare. Let's take another look at this one. Little delayed reaction. Half pocket, here comes the head pin. Off the wall. And the messenger delivers the message. And now Dakota for a big wide open split. And he converts it. And he likes it. Well, that is definitely worth a second look. Not trying to do that. Gets that way over to the right. Slices that six over into the seven. And that's how it's done. All right. Dawson up on the left. Hoping for a wall shot, but it doesn't get the 10. Tyrell working on a spare on the right lane. And he does get the 10 to go, and he celebrates. I don't know if antics like that get into the head of Dawson, but it's certainly entertaining a 
spare for Dawson, and their match remains close. Now Charlie on the front five, and now the front six. He's halfway there. And Josh, four strikes in five frames. He needs to keep pace with Charlie. He needs another strike right here. Oh, but that's not how you get it. Oh, my goodness. The Greek church. And the worst part about the Greek church, aside from the fact that it's rarely made, is that he just lost five pins in count. The four, six, seven, nine, ten. Two schools of thought on this. Usually you see players go for the three on the right. Well, that's not how you make it. And now he's lost a whole bunch of pins in count. Actually, the times I've made that split, I've always gone for the two on the left. But honestly, in a match play situation where you're trying to save count, I would always suggest going for the three unless you absolutely have to make it. But in Josh's case, he is now down by 56 to Charlie. So that match may be going south on Team Panda. Remember, they need to win four of these matches and total pins to get to a roll off. Jawan still just one pin down. And that ball doesn't quite make it back, and he's got the washout. The 1 3 7. Karina on a strike. She's a little wide with that one and leaves the two. Juwan wants to put that ball right on the three pin, really. Just nick the one, slide it over into the seven. That's not how you do it. Well, as we sometimes say, he got the hard one. But he didn't get the ones he needed to get to have a chance to make it. Here's Karina for the two. And with that spare, she holds on to a 16-pin lead over Juwan. Christian up on the right, working on a double. He can take the lead if he strikes here. Oh, that's left. That's left of left. Bryant. Oh, a little high, but he trips the six into the eight. And we better take another look at that one. Watch. Watch the three pin go to the wall, trips the six, and slaps it over into the eight. How about that? And now Christian with a tricky spare here, the one, three, nine. That's how you make it. That is how you make it. All right, Joshua on a spare. Well, he got that one wide. He got it a little too wide. And now he's got a problem. The washout. The one, three, seven, nine. He's trying to catch Dakota, who is up on the right with a 28 pin lead. And coming off that conversion of the 6 7 10, he blows the rack. And Joshua makes the washout. I am not believing some of these shots we're seeing by these kids today. Look at this. That's textbook right there. All right, Dawson up on the right. And this time he gets the wall shot on a light hit. And that's what he needed, a strike, to start to put some pressure on Tyrell. Oh, look at this break. Tyrell through the nose and breaks up the split, leaving just the seven pin. And Josh R leaves the four pin. And here is 
Tyrell's reaction a moment ago when he broke up that split. He liked it. And now he goes for that spare and no problem on the seven. Josh R for the four. Easy conversion. And now Charlie working on the front six. He's halfway there. Oh! So we will not have a 300 game today. Had some pretty good runs at it, though. Karina up on the right. Team Tyrell now has a 67 pin lead, and it's not looking good for Team Panda right now. She says, I'll get it, I'll get it. Well, there have been a lot of spectacular shots made today. I. At this point, nothing would surprise me. Charlie cross lane for the 10. And he gets it. Let's see if Karina can make good on her promise. Got to get the ball over on the seven pin, slide the four over into the 10. Oh, this is going to be close. Oh, good try. But now her lead shrinks to just one over Jawan. Oh, but Jawan pulls that one. Oh, he's going to get more than three. Look at this. They're still falling. The one, three, five. Not one we see too often, but certainly makeable. Bryant with a strike up. Well, let's see. He's going to let Jawan go ahead and shoot his spare first. And that's how you do it. Bryant. Ooh, that one came in a little light and he didn't quite catch it all at the bottom as it deflected and nearly left the 5-10, but easy spare. Christian still chasing him though. Needs to get a little String of strikes going here at the end. Oh, but instead he loses it wide, and now he faces another hard spare, a super washout. As Bryant converts his 10 pin, that puts a little pressure on Christian right there because now he can't afford an open frame. The one, two, four, six, 10, you shoot it just like a washout. Put the one right on the six and hope to get the 10 as well. Or you can go between the one and six. I've seen it made both ways. Oh, that was close. An awfully good try. Here's Joshua on the right lane. And he goes through the nose and somehow gets nine out of that. And he is bewildered at why he can't seem to string many strikes here. He's only had two this game, while Dakota has just been running away. And, well, look at this. Josh's two-pin fell over. And it's still sitting there. Here's Dakota on the left. And another strike, that's a double, so he increases his lead. We've told Joshua, knock that deadwood off the lane, we'll give you a spare. So there you go. Again, if this were sanctioned competition, you certainly would have the spare reset. But in this circumstance, unofficial, informal, impromptu competition, where I make the rules. <laughs> Here's Dawson on the left lane, working on a strike. Needs one. Oh, just comes up a little high. And he can't seem to string him today either. He's bowled a pretty good game. Just six pin, seven pin.
Tyrell through the nose and trips the four. Gotta like that one. I don't think Dawson was too thrilled with it. Opportunity squandered this time by Dawson, though. He really wanted that strike. That could have closed the match down to just a couple of pins. As he covers the six, Charlie up on the right. His match well in hand against Josh. And there's the strike. Josh in the eighth on the left lane. And through the nose and four, six, city. Trouble. That match has just about gotten away from them. And now Juwan up on the right. Look at this. Charlie's up by 57 pins. The team leads by 59. So the rest of the matches are pretty even. A split, the 2 7 for Juwan. Panda goes for the 4 6. You're not going to slide that one over very often. And looky here. The split for Juwan has been swept off by the pin setter. So for the third time today, we're going to ask the player to just shoot what's there. In this case, he'd probably rather shoot a full rack than at a split anyway, even though it is just the 2-7. But he's got 10 pins to knock down to get his spare. We give him the 8 that he got on the first ball. But that's eight out, so it's as if he missed both pins on the second ball. And that is 124 through nine, and that's trouble. As Karina up in the ninth, leading by 15. And she crosses over and leaves the three. And now Christian up in the ninth. He's down by 28 now. He's got to put the hammer down. No messenger for Christian, and that's a 10 pin. And now his path to victory has narrowed a bit. Karina for the three pin. And that's solid. Christian all the way over by the ball return. Cross lane at the 10. And I think all that practice at sevens and tens earlier today has paid off. We've seen these kids, most of them, convert those spares today. Here's Bryant on the left working on a spare. Thin leaving the three, five, six. And now Dakota, his match, pretty well in hand, working on a double. But through the nose, and a little glimmer of hope for Joshua. As Bryant going for the cluster and leaves the five, chops the three off the five. And now a glimmer of hope for Christian as well couple of matches tightening up here. And Dakota goes boldly for the 4-6-10, but you're not going to make that sliding it over. I would have just gone for two in that circumstance. But now his lead shrinks to 22, and Joshua wants a strike to set up the 10th. Denied. Solid shot, but a ringing seven. And now Dawson up on the right. He too needing to set up the 10th. 
And he does. Here's Joshua, just hangs on. He uses the 39th board to make the seven pin. And now Panda up on the right, his match pretty much sealed. And that ring and 10 in the ninth means Charlie is the winner and Team Tyrell is one win away from capturing this team showdown as Tyrell puts up a double in the ninth and now he extends his lead over Dawson to 22. So it is looking bleak for Team Panda and look at this. He misses the 10 pin. And now the lead grows to 107. And remember, Team Panda not only needs to win four matches, but they need to take total pins as well. Charlie, a strike in the ninth. So I don't really see Team Panda uh, overcoming a 117-pin lead in the 10th frame. That would be uh, a little beyond miraculous. That would be mathematically impossible, I believe. I've seen 100 pin leads vanish in two frames in league. I don't think I've ever seen 117 go in one frame. Juwan makes a good pass at that one, but it just comes up a little light. He almost got the wall shot, but leaves the 10. So the best he can do is 144 with a spare and a strike. Karina sitting at 129 if she throws two balls in the gutter here. And I don't think she's going to do that. There is an eight count on the first ball. And that's it. Karina wins the match as Juwan misses the 10. And with Karina's win, that seals the victory for Team Tyrell in our first ever Prodigy Team Showdown. Karina's point is the one that puts them over the top. As she converts the 4-7. Christian up in the 10th, trying to make as good a showing as he can. Changes balls. Goes a little straighter at the pocket. Throws a strike in the 10th. He could still win his match. And a seven count to finish for Karina. Now Christian, if he strikes here, that would put him in the 170s, high 170s. That would force Bryant to mark. and a wiggling four pin. And that is as far as that one will take you. So now he can get to 168 with a conversion. Oh, look at this. Bryant with a seven count wins his match over Christian. If Christian makes the spare, it's 168. Bryant is sitting at 169 right now. And that's why you use the big ball. All right, the three, six, seven. Are you kidding? Oh! I thought we were going to see another remarkable conversion. But what a great effort by Bryant. Let's take another look. He just misses. He overcut it. And that three pin actually hit the seven and got it to dance just a little. I don't know if I'd call that a dance, maybe a shimmy. Dakota through the nose, leaves the three six baby split and that's enough. Dakota takes his match. So Team Panda will not be skunked anyway. 
Here's a solid strike in the 10th for Joshua. As he celebrates that, he's wondering uh, what took him so long. Dakota for the split. And a solid conversion. This kid has showed me something today. A walk on who just wanted to be a part of Prodigy. He said he's watched all the episodes. Well, he's going to see himself on this one, make some pretty darn good shots. He bowled well today. This kid told me he's a 160 average. He shot 206 the first game and 208 this game. So he certainly acquitted himself nicely today. All right, Joshua, 11th frame. And through the nose, leaving the 2 4 7. All right, Dawson's got his back to the wall now. He's trailing by 22 pins. His is the only match that's not decided yet. He needs this one. But this one goes through the nose, and let's see, he can still get 184 with a conversion and a strike, so Tyrell will at least have to show up in the 10th. Joshua going for the spare and converts it and finishes with a 186 Dawson for his conversion straight at the two pin so the scores are off a little bit this game from the first game although nobody has uh, sent that message to Charlie. He's still got 279 possible if he takes it off the sheet. And not quite the trip of the 6-8, but a nine count for 183 for Dawson. And that is one way to trip the four. What got the four pin there? There's a mixer for Josh R. Let's take another look at Tyrell's strike here as this one goes high. And I think that was the three pin off the right wall. We will watch it again, and this time we'll get a look at his reaction. Oh, you think he liked that one? And this time the four stays up. As Josh R gives it the big loft. With the bumpers up this time, by the way, I notice. Tyrell will close out this game. A conversion for 215. Good game. Good showing today. And Josh R. Just uh, sort of a give up ball there. A 169. I know he's not happy with that. And now let's see how much Charlie can get. Team Tyrell with a 124 pin lead, four matches won. They're gonna win the competition today, 13 to one. Talk about a lopsided finish. The nine pin decides to cooperate at the very last instant. Watch this. This is a strike in super slow motion. A little high. And he just tips it out. 
So one more strike to put him in the 270s. And that one goes through the nose. So he's going to finish in the 260s, 267 with a conversion. And boy, we saw some bowling today. We saw splits made. We saw big scores. We saw some kids step up that we have not seen bowl before. This was fun. It wasn't close, but it was fun. I would have liked to have seen a uh, little closer finish, but you won't see better shot making by junior bowlers, I don't believe. It's a big win today for Team Tyrell. 13 to 1, the final count. And we will be back to add them all up right after this. This is the Star Sapphire, a gem of hypnotic beauty. Now, Brunswick captures that same deep sapphire glow in a beautiful new bowling ball, the Brunswick Crown Jewel. Every movement brings out new mystery and beauty. A unique material gives you a firmer grip, a new promise of scoring accuracy. And its lasting luster will look new for years in your choice of glowing ruby red, iridescent black pearl, or shimmering sapphire blue. To own the new crown jewel is a permanent satisfaction. A prized possession you'll treasure for life. Made only by Brunswick, the number one name in bowling. Step into fun. Learn to bowl free. The fast and easy Brunswick way. Sign up at your favorite lane today. Well, where I come from, what we witnessed today is called a good old-fashioned beatdown as Team Tyrell put a whooping on Team Panda by a final score of 13 to 1. The only point one by Team Panda was taken by Dakota in the final game. But while this first ever Prodigy Team Showdown may have lacked a photo finish, it certainly wasn't short on shot making. These remarkable young bowlers showed incredible skill and precision and displayed a mixture of power and finesse usually associated with players older and more experienced. These kids put on the kind of show today that makes Prodigy Bowlers Tour what it is, a showcase for promising young talent. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Brownswick Bowling, to be alerted whenever a new video goes up and please give this video a thumbs up. To get a sneak peek behind the scenes and receive a heads up whenever a new prodigy is in production, join our Facebook group. You guessed it, it's called Prodigy Bowlers Tour. And you can follow us on Twitter, at Prodigy Bowlers. This is USBC Silver Certified Coach Randy Brown. You can find me at brownswick.com. We'll see you next time on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. Between now and then, go rock the lanes. <laughs>